This podcast is sponsored by NaturalBossNH.com, New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and SlowdownClothing.BigCartel.com. More on that later. Let's get into episode 45 of Talking with Topher. What is happening, TWT fans? I am so happy to be back. It is February 8th. It is Monday. Um, The sun is out. The snow is melting. What a great day. Um, If you are like me, you're probably tired of shoveling. But don't worry. There's more on the way. Um, let's start this out the way I always do by thanking all of you out there for subscribing, watching, commenting, and sharing. This thing keeps getting bigger and I have all of you to thank for that. Um, if you are new to the podcast, hit the subscribe button, hit those like buttons if you're enjoying the videos and comment. That's that's what helps send this thing to the top. Your comments are super important. And talking about talking with Topher is important. Spread the word. If you're enjoying it, I'm sure somebody you know will enjoy it just as much as you do. So spread this thing. Help me make this bigger and better. Um, the email, that is T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com is the official email of the podcast if you or someone you know has a story that needs to be heard send it there Uh, make sure you put your story topic in the uh, subject line and it doesn't have to just be a story it can be what's going on positive in your life did you change something did you start something new i'm looking for ups downs goods bads dark happy doesn't matter want want whatever you would like to talk about that's what i would like to talk about so send that to the official email that is t-a-l-k-i-n with topher at gmail.com and then uh you can always follow me on snapchat twitter instagram facebook and tiktok that's right i'm on all social media go there follow uh, usually day-to-day updates on things, how things are going, workouts getting done, kettlebells being swung and heading off to jujitsu class. So if you want some more content, go to social media and follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. Um, and that seems to be all the housework today. We're going to bust through this one. It's going to be a shorty this week. Um, unfortunately I had camera issues earlier, so I recorded the podcast and then I went to play it back and boy, oh boy, it was no good. So this is take two, um, very frustrating. Um, you know, I, uh, screwed up a few things at work with our social media and, um, got my boss a little frustrated And that has made me frustrated because I got to hear about that just before this podcast. So I'm not in the proper mindset as I usually am. I'm thinking about how I could have not have done that, how I could have fixed it. And but I didn't. I screwed it up. Um, I wasn't paying attention. I thought I was uh, logging into Snapchat, but somehow I was on Instagram and I was trying to log into Snapchat. So doesn't make any sense to me because why would I be on Instagram if I'm trying to log into Snapchat? Right. But my stupid brain, I was like, Oh, I'm going to try and do this. And I didn't register that I was still on Instagram and I changed the whole password to the shop and the whole nine. And it was just a mess. And now I'm irritated about it. Um, cause we have a company that deals with that and yes, they do a shitty ass job of doing it. Um, but now they have no access. Uh, the boss is paying, the owner is paying to have this, uh, done, you know, so he has to pay for it weekly. They won't be capable of talking to anybody until Wednesday. So now that's a whole week that he has paid for that doesn't get done. Um, and that's my fault. So I'm frustrated about that and I'm upset about it and I'm kicking myself right now and I think it's showing. And then the camera malfunction, uh, just threw me over and here I am. So now I'm doing this all over again and it's fine. 
I didn't care for a few of the things I was talking about anyway, so this is way better. Um, but yeah, speaking of that company, man, I just I don't know. They they post if you, anybody follows NHVG on Instagram, uh, Twitter, or any of that. Um, there, it's all old pictures and it's so annoying. Um, I mean, I've asked, uh, to take it over, um, and he re-signed up with someone else and that's fine if that's what he really wants to do, but I'm sorry. Can they like come and get some updated pictures or maybe give us access to upload pictures to them? Um, because everything that they're using is from five years ago and it's so annoying. So if you look or follow our Instagram, we don't carry anything that they advertise anymore. We don't carry any of the baby beast tanks. They don't even exist. Um, a lot of the old, uh, just old, old pictures, old vape mods that don't exist anymore. Old juice in glass bottles that doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, so I, I understand his frustration, and I know it's because of my stupidity. I'm not going to deny that. I definitely was pretty pretty dumb during this whole thing. I mean, how is it that I go on to uh, – let me, let me put it in a little bit more uh, context too. The phone at the shop is an iPhone 4, so it's really old. It's broken. The screen's popping out. The thing doesn't load fast at all. It barely updates. And I was running late. So all I wanted to do was log into the Snapchat on my phone so that I could take some quick pictures, upload them quickly, and get done with what I was doing. The problem is, is that I don't always pay attention to what I'm doing. So I wanted to do this. I set my mind to do it. But then I got a customer. When I got the customer and I got rid of the customer, I went back to my phone, forgot why I wanted to, why I was in Instagram. And I went, oh yeah, because I need to do this for the shop. I didn't think twice about it. I just logged out, tried to log in. And by the time I logged, but it wouldn't let me log in. And I'm like, wait a minute. I don't understand. This is the password. I, I, I know this is the password. I made this freaking password. Why isn't it working? So I go through the whole thing and I change the password. Now, in past times, nothing to do with the shop. I have a credit card that no matter what I do, every month I would pay the bill and every month it would have me change my password. So I thought I was just dealing with something like that thought I was just dumb and then I log in to the Instagram after changing the password and I realize that I'm on Instagram <laughs> and I was just like you've got to be kidding me and then I get out of Instagram, realize that I've changed the password, I now realize that there is a company that deals with this uh, social media account and I have just taken the password away from them so I have completely screwed up a company that we're paying for I've logged into the wrong account and I still haven't logged into snapchat or taken the pictures now how much time do you think has passed well about a half an hour so 30 minutes wasted on Nothing. All I had to do was pick up the old phone and deal with the lag, deal with a little bit of time, and I could have avoided this whole situation. But I was trying to add photos that I have taken on my phone to our Snapchat. I can't add my links onto the phone for the Snapchat of the sh for the shop. I, I, so I was trying to add stuff, right? I'm trying to make it better. I'm trying to add in some more of my own stuff and. Uh, uh, add it to our uh, shop's uh, Snapchat. So it just turned into a big failure. And I think me recording the first time and having the camera fuck up was a good thing because now I get to get this off my chest. And I wasn't talking about it before. I was hiding it. And I feel like you could have seen that in the video. Um, and this is just something that needs to be talked about. I was 
dumb, and now he is inconvenienced and upset. And um, I just wish I didn't do that, first off. I really do. I really wish my brain went, hey, stupid, you're on Instagram, not Snapchat. You need to just go to the right um, social media account and you'll be fine. You'll be able to log in. Um, but on the same, but in the same sense, I wish this company that he has hired to take care of our stuff cared enough to come back and take more pictures and do some actual interviewing, um, and do all the stuff that they were doing in the beginning and do it again. Um, because the pictures that they took four years ago are not relevant today. And it's just kind of sad. I think our Instagram suffers from it. But that's what I did this week to screw things up at the shop. So it's not the end of the world. And uh, I'm sure he'll get over it. And we'll talk about it again on Thursday. He'll watch this Thursday morning. It is what it is. I fucked up. And I just want to be able to fix it. Um, and I just wish that that company would do a better job um, advertising and keeping up with things for us. Or, or at least give us access to maybe send them new photos. You know, give me an email link and I'll take photos of all the new stuff in the shop and email it to them. And then maybe we can get our Instagram pictures and stuff like that updated to products that we're actually selling today. Um I mean, it's just really sad when a bottle of juice is still in a glass bottle. It's it's just so ancient now. Um, but yeah, so I got some stories today. They're not negative. Um, they're not really positive. They're just there's no bad endings to these. And I think a lot of my stories are usually pretty bad ending. Um, you know, um, but they still have lessons in them, and I think they are important. Uh, uh, I think they're important to just talk about them. All right. So this is what I was doing when I was a teenager, um, 95, 96. So I was about 15, 16, uh, still living in East Derry. And uh, we were what we, what you call latchkey kids. So my parents would work. Nobody would be home when we get out of school. I'd have a key. I'd let my sister into the house, blah, blah, blah. And I was in charge, basically. And then, you know, keep the house from falling apart. And that's what a latchkey kid is. So, um, my parents, I don't remember. They were doing something. I don't remember if it was one night, a couple nights. Ten to one, it was one night. Um, so, they're going out. We get the house to ourselves. And I decided this is a great opportunity to throw a party. So, I'm throwing a party, right? Gathering all the friends. Friends are telling friends. That's how this goes. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So, people are over. We go, we go, we were drinking. We are smoking pot. Um, and at the time my friend had a Thunderbird 5.0 in it. I had an Oldsmobile Cutlass Fiera GT FE3. <laughs> it's so much fun to say. Um, that had a 5.0 in it and I had the coupes, the sun, the moon roof, the, it, it was a clunky car. Like look them up. It's a, it was a great car. I loved it. Transmission blew up. <laughs> But no surprise the way I drove it. And as soon as you hear this, you'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah, he did, he fucking tooled that car. Um, but anyway, so I actually bought it with a bad transmission. I'll be honest. Um, so we decide, now we're drunk and high, that it would be a great idea to race our cars up and down the street. I do not remember how many times this happened. Um, I remember racing one or two people. But this is the one that stood out the most. So if you go down my street, um, there was only a left and right hand turn at the end. Across the street was... Sorry, I can't stop yawning. Across the, across the street was the lawn. 
Then they did some bark mulch with some bushes. And then they did a wall of trees. And it doesn't take long to get there. It's a short little distance. And uh, we decided to race. So a couple, uh, I, I raced one of my friends. I uh, beat him. Uh, I mean, I'm not bragging. I mean, it was a 5.0. She was, she was fast. Um, but um, then I was racing my friend in the Thunderbird. And uh, he's on the... He's on the left, I'm on the right, and somebody's telling us to go, so we go. And I'm watching myself pull away from him, pull away from him, and I am just flooring uh, my car. I, I, I'm not thinking about anything else except for beating him to the end of the street. Now, I did not give myself enough time to stop. So I beat him to the end of the street, stomp on my brakes, go across the street, go into the lawn, go up onto the bark mulch, and almost take out one of their trees. I think I ended up taking out a bush. My friend is coming up. He sees me go where I'm not supposed to be going. And he takes the left, takes it a little wide, hits a little bit of grass, goes down some ways. I'm backing out and I'm watching him and he just starts doing donuts. And I should let you know that it is getting dark out. Um, so it's probably like seven, eight o'clock um, at night when the sun's going down because this is like spring or summer. Um, and uh, he's doing donuts. There's lots of smoke billowing. And he comes out through the cloud. He comes back down. We both get back down to the house, get out of the cars. So now we park the cars, we get out, we get back in the house. We're all hanging out again. And then we start seeing cops. And I'm not talking like like a car and it's got a couple cops in it. I'm talking like I saw three cruisers go up and down the street. So they were looking for us, right? And... uh Luckily, a lot of people, there weren't a lot of cars because not a lot of people drove themselves. Um, so, you know, most most of, most of us had to, like, one of us had the license and the other people would gather in the car. So, it, luckily, there was not a ton of vehicles in the driveway. It kind of looked like, a, you know, a household that probably had, like, five individuals that drove cars. So, nothing out of the ordinary. But... Cops end up showing up at the house, and as soon as we see them going up and down the street, we've already scattered. I've already got I got I got kids hiding in cabinets. I got kids hiding in showers. I got kids hiding in my attic. I got kids hiding in my parents' closet, like everywhere. They're like it was it was so funny because like there was a couple spots where like we're running around the house telling people to come out, and like people are popping out of spots, and I'm like. How did you, what, you, I didn't even realize anybody could hide in there. You know what I mean? So everybody hit in, the cops come, me and my sister get rid of the cops. Not really get rid of them, but we're like, yeah, the, 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 everything's fine. I don't know. We heard that too. Um, and then, you know, they leave us alone. They go away. And then uh, everybody comes back out. Um, everybody wants to go. Um, I'm pretty sure we were all like, no, 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 nobody should leave just yet. Um, give it some time. So we let the, we let about an hour go and then people start trickling out and everybody comes back out. There was a couple people that hung out for the rest of the night and then everybody else went home. I don't remember anybody telling me they got arrested or anything like that. So pretty much went out pretty, pretty much everybody got away with it. Uh, the house was a nightmare to clean up in the morning. Um, that is definitely one thing if you're throwing a party. Uh, just keep in mind that if you got anything fragile or nothing or something that you don't want anybody else to touch, well, then uh, either make it very clear or don't have those things lingering around because my house was trash. We had to clean that place up and, you know, it takes all day to clean it. And then, you know, the parents come home and you're exhausted because you just partied all night. And now you spent all day cleaning just so that they don't find out that this happened. And they always find out that it happens. I'm pretty sure they found out it happened. Um, but like I said, it wasn't 
a bad ending. It's just, again, poor decisions. Poor, poor decisions. A lot of drinking, a lot of smoking, and uh, someone someone could have gotten severely hurt or died just from fucking around with our cars on my par- on the street. You know what I mean? And it's like you do this stuff close to your house, and I don't know about you, but I never thought about how it affected uh, my parents or my neighbors or anything like that. And it really does affect. If It affects your neighbors. Your neighbors are like, well, these people are assholes. You know, whenever the parents aren't around, these kids are fucking running amok and they're racing their cars and, you know. So you just... As much as as much as it is fun to have the house to yourself and as exciting as you think it might be to throw a party in your parents' house, I will tell you firsthand, um, not that great. A um, lot of work involved. And if that had gone really sideways and someone gotten hurt, my parents were liable for that. And I don't... I'm pretty sure because I didn't even know this when I was a kid, but that's why our parents used to get so upset with us when we were have friends over or we get caught drinking um, and stuff like that because they are responsible. So it's just something, just something to think about. And if you didn't know that, now you know. So this is why your parents don't want you to do this stupid shit. It's not only to keep you safe and uh, it's not really to keep you from having fun. It's just that they're responsible for anybody on their property. So I wish I, I, I can't say I wish, but I, I, I do wish that I had known that um, back then. But I probably still wouldn't have cared. I probably still would have did what I did, and that's just what I did. Um, so uh, that was one of the first times that I was left in charge at my parents' house, had the whole night, and what did I do? I threw a party. Threw a party, and it was quite exciting. Uh, but I don't recommend it for anybody, and that was a little bit of FYI on why you shouldn't do it. If you want to do it, then wait till you get your own house and then throw the party. But by the time you get your own house, you'll realize what logistics are involved and you'll have the same mindset as your parents and you won't be doing it. I mean, gatherings and stuff are completely different. Throwing a giant house party and having people getting really fucked up and then leaving your house and possibly getting into an accident, that all becomes your problem. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's see. All right. So when I was about 17, I was really getting into psychedelics and my choice of psychedelics were like acid. That was, that was my, that was what I first got introduced. I never, mushrooms were barely talked about. Um, I heard a little bit about them. You saw them a little bit in high times and stuff. Um, but most of the stuff that you read about, it wasn't like it is today. It's not as easy to get your hands on it back then. Um, it was most of the time it was fake ads and just just a bunch of fake. Today, there's a lot of reputable companies out there, and the studies go deep on all psychedelics, acid, shrooms, uh, special K, uh, all that stuff, and it's great for PTSD and stuff. I've heard. I don't suffer from that, so I don't know, but. I also heard it's good for depression. So a lot of good benefits from psychedelics uh, today, especially Special K and mushrooms. Um, but what I like to do is is I used to love eating acid and going hiking and going out into the woods and the wilderness. It was just awesome being part of nature. So I am living with my girl. And in her parents' house and her little brother's home. And I decide, hey, you want to try this? And he's like, yeah, sure. And now, of course, I'm only 16, 17. But I'm definitely the older one here. And I understand that. Unfortunately, um, he was 12. Um, and I gave him some. I gave him like a tab of acid. 
And we go hiking into the woods, and we just have this experience of amazing. And and this isn't, like I said, it's not a bad story, but it's not really that great because of the fact that he was 12. This shouldn't be happening. It's... I now know that he was way too young and I was completely in the wrong for doing this. But luckily, by the time this kid was 15, he was done with me. So that's okay. Um, He figured it out. He figured out that I was a bad influence, wasn't exactly the best person to be around, and uh, he moved on. And today he's doing very well, so I'm very happy for him. I'm glad he did that, and it was a really good move of him to do that. Anybody who separated from me um, in my younger years uh, made the right decision, uh, for sure. Um, So we go out, we're going into the woods, um, smoking some pot. That helps increase the visualizations. Um, and then I'm standing there in the woods and everything is moving, even though nothing should be moving, you know, cause they're trees and leaves and bushes. So it's not supposed to be moving. Um, uh, everything's breathing, everything's moving, everything's living. And it's just absolutely amazing. And then this is when I was like, you know, kind of just doing one of these and I'm like, wow, look at everything. And I go like this to the sky and I reach up and I grab the sky and I pull it down. And it's not like I grabbed like a piece of the sky and had it in my hand. It was more like I grabbed a hold of the color and I pulled it down like paint. And it was like I was in an oil painting for a little bit. And... I was smearing the colors together and I was making art out of nature and I was manipulating the colors and blending them together and then probably about a couple minutes go by maybe it was longer I don't really know you kind of lose track of time that was that's one of my favorite things about going out into the wilderness and into the woods and doing these type of things is that there is no structure there is no time we didn't have cell phones back then um you know it wasn't until 98 when I got my very first flip phone and I actually bought it myself I was so happy So we didn't have any of that technology, and I barely ever wore a watch. So no telling of time, but I'm having this incredible, um, very, very visual uh, trip. And her brother's joining in, he's seeing it, he's playing too, and like we're just having this grand old time. And it was turned out to be one of the best experiences I've ever had with psychedelics. And that's because later in life, things just got worse. And I'll get, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, that's kind of, it's kind of like the, well, I don't know. I'll get to that in a minute. So this was a great experience. It was so much fun. We had a really good time. And then we came home, ate dinner, and it was the end of the day. You know what I mean? So like nothing crazy happened. It was just an awesome experience. But this builds up to what can happen, where it can go. Right? So now I'm going to – I got another fun one, and then it kind of gets a little – little dark um but yeah so uh now a couple years later right uh 99 2000 um i've got my friends over um i'm still living in um the girl's house with the parents um i now have you know i got my room i've officially moved in um and i was like yeah uh, let's Called ever called up a couple people. I'm like, come on over. I got I got some more, I got some more acid. Come on over. Let's do this. So, 
I take like four hits. I give my friends like two hits each. And we're hanging out in my room. It's four or five o'clock in the afternoon. We're having a grand old time. I'm, I'm, I've got the, the, all the windows covered. The black lights are on. The black light posters are shining. We're taking glow sticks and popping them and spraying them all over the wall or the floor. I don't even fucking remember. I think it got all over a desk and a wall and a ceiling. It just sprayed everywhere. And it was like these little stars and we're just watching them. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> and then I, uh, you know, uh, the girl comes in, checks on us, see how we're doing. We're all just having fun, listening to, Jesus Christ, what was I listening to? Steve Miller. That's right, because I, before that, I had an experience on Mushrooms, and I was listening to Steve Miller, the Steve Miller band, and... I was in love with them. So I wouldn't stop listening to Steve Miller Band. It was so awesome and trippy. And I wanted everybody to enjoy this experience with me. And so I tried to duplicate it. The thing is, is that you can't duplicate trips. You can't really duplicate much. Um, even today when I get high, I don't even really notice that I'm high anymore. I just know that I'm calm and collective and but I don't feel like super baked anymore it doesn't slow me down it's just weird it's weird now it's like normal um but I was trying to replicate this and then we were still having a good time and everybody was enjoying the music um uh, but it wasn't being replicated I wasn't having the same effects so now it's turning into probably eight nine o'clock um, her little brother was out, uh, doing some practice or something. He used to be into sports back then. He comes home. He's like looking for everybody gets told that we're upstairs. So he comes upstairs and he comes into the room and, and he sees everything going on. And he's like, what is happening? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And we smoke a little bit. Um, I'm like here, you know, uh, cause pot was never a big thing in that house anyways. Um, you know, so that was the that was probably one of the you know craziest things during these times was having a place where we could just freely smoke pot all the time um and 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 back then i mean you get caught you went to jail that was the end of the story it's not like it is today so hooray for progress um and then i get this awesome idea i'm like hey what do you guys think about smoking shrooms? And everybody's like, hmm, okay. Right? I mean, twist my arm, right? So I go into my cabinet and I grab them and I crush them up. And then I start putting it in the pipe. Um, and there's nothing else in it. We didn't put any weed under it, no tobacco under it. I literally just stuffed this thing full of mushrooms. And now we're sitting there smoking these things. And... Mind you, her little brother, straight as an arrow when he walked in. We've been tripping off of acid for four to five hours now. And now we're, we're all high. And now we're smoking shrooms. So about a half an hour goes by. Shrooms are gone. Um, we're all just hanging out, laughing, having a grand old time. And then uh, her little brother leaves. <laughs> and he goes out. And he does whatever he had to do. I don't remember why he wanted to leave. I think he got hungry. And then he comes back and he's like, oh my God, I'm tripping so hard. And all of us were like, really? Did that really work? And he's like, well, I wasn't and now I am. So I'd have to say yes. And I'm like, that's amazing. But we didn't even realize that it had done much because we were still on the acid but what happened was is that if we couldn't drive home, we were supposed to wake up my girlfriend. And now it's 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and none of us can drive. We are tripping so hard still that we're not capable of driving. So wake her up. She drives us, she drives everybody home. And then me and her get back to the house. She goes back to bed and I go back to just staying awake and 
and tripping for the rest of the night. So it turned out to be like at four o'clock in the afternoon. I think I was done probably about eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning. So it was, it was almost a 12, well, four to four, right? So four in the afternoon, four in the morning, that's 12. You need to tack another five onto that. So it was like a 17 hour trip. Um, it was probably one of the best nights I had in my teenage getting close to my, yeah, I think I was almost 20 by then. And it was just amazing. And this is why I wanted to tell these stories. Not because this is amazing. Don't get me wrong here, but because this is where it starts going. Naturalbossnh.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H.com. This website has the best hand sanitizer I have ever used. And with all the recalls out there and all the bad products that have been produced in the last year, it is nice to find a company that does it right. And Natural Boss does it right. Their hand sanitizer smells great, works great, and doesn't leave my hands sticky when I need to drive right after using it, helping me fight flu and COVID and keeping my hands clean. It's amazing. But it's not the only product that they have. They have a salve, which is great for dry skin. Um, they also have a lip balm, which is great to keep your lips moist, especially during these cold winter storms. When you're out there shoveling, your lips get all cracked, get yourself some Natural Boss Lip Balm. It's amazing. They also have a beard oil, so if you're keeping that beard on your face to stay warm this winter, but it keeps getting snarly and snagged and just kind of gross looking, get the beard oil. It'll help that. And then, of course, they have a bath and body soak. So after shoveling a long day at work and you're looking for some time to sit down and relax, well, make a bath. Put some salt in it and soak. It'll feel great. You'll feel great. And you'll be ready to take on tomorrow. So go down to naturalbossnh.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H.com. Get any one of these five amazing products today. New Hampshire Vape Gallery is located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings. We're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. And you can always come in our store provided you wear a mask. Feel free to give us a call, 603-814-4171. I'm telling you, this vape shop has got what you're looking for. Are you looking for disposables? Bam. Escobars, 2,500 puffs, $25. Are you looking for 510 batteries? V-Mod 2, back in stock. This thing's amazing. Magnet system, high voltage, perfect for any size cartridges. Also, RPM-80. RPM2, absolute amazing pod mods that hit like a box mod but fit in your pocket. I love these things. But let's say you want a new box mod. Got those two. We got batteries. We got chargers. We got tanks. We got coils. We have it all. This vape shop will not let you down. And again, this is New Hampshire Vape Gallery located at 180 Lafayette Road, Seabrook, New Hampshire, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Rings. We're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. You can always come in our store provided you wear a mask. And feel free to give us a call, 603-814-4171. And I look forward to seeing you there. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. I love this website. They have some of the best tattooed inspired prints I have ever seen. They are colorful, they are eye catching, and they are high quality. That's right. I have a couple shirts that are about five or six years old, and I have put them through the wash hundreds of times, and they still come out bright, colorful, even though you can tell that they have been worn. Not only do they have t-shirts but they also have women's leggings with wonderful absolutely wonderful prints all over them from ankle to thigh they've got gloves they've got skateboards they got trucker hats and of course many shirts to choose from adults women's and kids sizes available um they came out with a new line uh, not a new line they came out with new products that's right now they have sweatpants and two different weighted 
uh, sweatshirt. So you get a heavyweight and a midweight sweatshirt um, with their patented logo embroidered on them. These things are awesome. So go to slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. And get any of these tattoo-inspired printed uh, clothes, hats, shirts, leggings, gaiters. Get it all at slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. And now, back to the show. So I'm always enjoying my trips. I'm always having a good time. And then things start falling downhill. Every time I took acid, I would get anxious, um, bad thoughts, um, bad juju, I guess you could call it. Um, and it was just each experience got a little bit worse until I got to the point where if I would even eat any acid, I would literally freak out. And what I would try to do was I would keep a 40 ounce of some OE in the fridge. I'd have at least a half an ounce of pot that was all mine that, that I didn't need to share. And then I would eat acid. And if shit started going sideways, I would smoke and then I'd drink to try and level it out so I could keep going. <laughs> and this... Is what I'm talking about. Even though I had all these experiences that were so magical and so inspirational and inspirational and just amazing, it turned into a dark thing. I mean, acid in general um, has stuck with me um, for years now. I have not touched acid since... I want to say 2004. It was probably the last time I dosed. And I still see stuff. Well, you can call it moving, but it looks to me more like breathing. And if you've ever done psychedelics, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but I still see that today. Like if I go on a hard run and I stare at a rug with a pattern or a tiled floor with a pattern... Anything with like a pattern, um, the patterns will actually start breathing. And especially when my heart rate gets up and stuff like that. But other times, I could be doing nothing. I could be sitting there on the toilet and I just look down at the floor and I see stuff move. So, yeah, I had a lot of fun and I really enjoyed a lot of the experiences that I had. But that shit permanently fucked my brain up. And I talked to the doctors about this and they gave me medications and these medications fucked me up. They were supposed to help my brain, my mood. Um, and all it did was make me uh, depressed, upset, and impotent. Like I lost control of my dick and it was very unfortunate. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? So I stopped taking all the pills because phew, I don't know about you, but if that shit fucking doesn't, if, 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 my, if my dick's not working, then what the fuck am I doing in life? Like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm 21, no, 24 at this time. And that's probably the most important appendage that I have on my body as a young adult male. Um, and I know that's kind of wrong to think, but that's, that's what it is. From the time that we're 13 until like we're 27, I feel like. I, I didn't even, uh, yeah, about then is when I started fucking figuring shit out. But that that's like your entire brain. It's just constantly looking to unload. And when it wasn't working anymore, I was like, oh, what? This can't be happening. And it just, it, it, it ruined a lot of shit for me. Um, and I had to go through a lot of talking, a lot of therapy, 
I had to figure shit out because of something I was having fun with. Now, uh, mushrooms, on the other hand, um, are are not as mind altering as acid is. Like, I'm pretty sure acid like rearranges your brain. It, it, it it's got the it's got everything firing all wrong. It's it's uh, uh, it's much more dangerous than psilocybin, which is what's in mushrooms. Um, and you can still have bad experiences on mushrooms if you eat too many, if you are not used to it. Um, you definitely don't want to go too big. Um, uh, but you can still have the same problems. Psychedelics are a touchy subject because they can alter you permanently. Um, so you do have to be careful. So what I did to, um, what I did to kind of try and get myself past all of this was I got off the pills I stopped taking acid. I stopped taking all psychedelics because I actually had a couple friends that went over the edge and one of them never came back. And it was really weird. He was a completely different person. And you, when you see that, you're like, ooh, ooh, that, that's real? I thought that was just to scare us into not doing this. And then you see it happen and you're like, oh, 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 they were being truthful. So, all of this put together, like, great times, great memories, years down the road, turns into a car wreck. And I still enjoy psychedelics, but on a lower level. Um, and now I'm older, um, and, and I'm using them for different reasons now. I'm not using them to get fucked up. I'm not using them. Well, all right, that's wrong. I am. I'm using them to get, to see stuff. I'm, I'm using them to get fucked up. I am, but I'm not like dosing like I was when I was a kid. Like when I was a kid, I go, you give me acid. I mean, I was eating Anywhere is between five and fifteen strips at a whack. I would just, I would just eat them, eat them, eat them, eat them, eat them, eat them, and it was like every hour I'd just add more. So it was like stupid, you know. The friends that I had that were eating, like you, you talk to people and they ate like a half a sheet or a sheet, and those, are the, those are the people that didn't come back. You know, they, 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 they broke the brain and. So it, as much fun as they can be, use caution, um, and uh, you know, just use caution. Super important to use caution with any drug in general. I mean, you gotta be careful with ca- caffeine. You gotta be careful with nicotine. You gotta be careful with everything. But that's it. That is the podcast, everybody. I just had a couple little stories with a quick little, you know, watch out for this. But I don't. I'm not against it. Um, as long as you, um, are aware of what can happen. I think if we're more aware of what can happen, then that makes us, that makes it, makes us smarter. It's better. Now, you know, your brain can break. So be careful. Don't not do it, but just don't do it as much and just use caution. Um, and when you're with friends, um, yeah, don't give them to the younger brother. You know, that was a really, really poor decision that I still will live with today, um, that I'm unhappy with. Uh, I wish I'd never done that, you know, and I am glad that I didn't break that kid, that I didn't cause him to go down a horrible path. Um, and that he was strong enough and smart enough to get away from me when he did. So, but that's it. That's the podcast. Um, I hope everybody out there has an enjoyable rest of the day. Enjoy the weekend. You know, um, hopefully we don't get plummeted, 
Uh, hopefully we don't get too much more snow. Um, I'm hearing something about tomorrow, which is Tuesday. And then, of course, by the time this comes out on Thursday, all of that will pass. And then hopefully we don't have anything coming into the weekend. But who knows? It's February. Winter's not over till March 21st. So, yeah, remember to subscribe. Hit those like buttons. Send your comments. Uh, share this thing. Help me make it bigger, and I appreciate you all for doing so much for me already. Um, official email of the podcast is T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. Put your subject in the subject line and send them on out. Anything you want to talk about, send it to the official email of the podcast, T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. And of course, as always, do not forget, you can follow me on social media. Um, That's right, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Go there, follow, I appreciate it. There's always updates. Um, I do daily stuff. I um, I do all kinds of stuff on Instagram. I've been posting my dogs a couple times, so just there having fun. Um, I really, okay, I just thought my timer stopped. I'm telling you, I am having a day. (laughs) Ah, fuck. All right, well, that's it, and that's that, motherfuckers. So I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their day. Enjoy the weekend. This is Talking with Topher, and I'll talk to you later.